Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kryptonize. Today, I have a very special guest. Well, not just me, but Amanda as well. We have Ali Kebab, and we're going to talk about the difference and what he's looking at today in NFTs, crypto, and especially DeFi, which is, well, two of them anyway are huge topics, NFTs and DeFi. So we're going to try and fit it all into this episode. We've got the expert here and I can't wait. And I know Amanda can't wait to hear from him. Before we do uh, jump in, Amanda, do you want to do a quick intro again and uh, talk about our, our guest briefly? Sure. Uh, my name is Amanda Whitcroft and I am the founder CEO of Panda PR and Marketing. I represent several crypto clients and again, we are here on this podcast to bring down in layman's terms of what cryptocurrency is in addition to NFTs and especially the DeFi market. So today we have Ali Kassab on with Centurion Invest, who is uh, going to discuss the difference of coins, the DeFi market and NFTs. Ali, it's nice to have you on today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Amanda. I'm very Proud and happy to be part of this podcast. And Ali, can you give us a little bit of background on yourself before we, we kick things off? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I started my first uh, venture 25 years, like 20 years ago. I uh, started with a software uh, company in France. I'm French national. Um, I have been um, like investing uh, in startups since my early uh, age. Uh, I did uh, three, four exits uh, before building Centurion Invest. Um, three, four successful exits. One of them was a software company for customer uh, uh, experience in France uh, named Vocalcom. Then uh, uh, when I, 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 I mean, I expanded my business to Dubai. Uh, in UAE and uh, you know Dubai and UAE was like very focused on smart government, uh, smart citizens, etc. Uh, and we built there uh, many startups with some big funds, local royal families. Um, one of them was a company named Sky Telecom, uh, who became like one of the largest digital distributor of telecom operators. Uh, then uh, we built, uh, so of course I exited that company and then we, we uh, I built uh, the largest payment platform for the government named MBME. Uh, MBME uh, was like uh, hosting 800 self-service kiosks in malls and in uh, communities to allow people like to, to transform cash into uh, digital transactions. So I have been like investing in fintech and uh, payment solutions since like very long time. Okay, and, and when we're talking about Centurion Invest, what specifically are you investing in? So C Centurion, um, as a company, is uh, is an incubator. Okay, Centurion is is based in Dubai. So we launched for, through Centurion. Uh, we incubated many startups. Um, one of them is Centurion Invest, which is an investment platform um, uh, for uh, multi-assets. Um, you will find the trading and investment platform for cryptocurrencies. And uh, the, the agenda will be the roadmap of Centurion Invest will be to have an all-in-one trading uh, and investment platform for all assets. Wonderful. Okay. So, do you know... NFTs are really hot right now, but you know I think there's still some people that don't know if this is the future. You know because you can digitize something and make it unique on a blockchain. So what? Uh, how is there value there when it can be easily copied since it's digital? So I think there's a let's just say it's an interesting debate uh, around that topic and. Uh, uh, I'm just curious what your perspective is, and Amanda, please chime in on you know the future of NFTs. You know, I mean, we didn't know that Bitcoin was uh, the future of digital gold when it first came out, and everybody was very skeptical about what it was, how it was going to be used. I think people, I, I actually know a story of a friend of mine who was offered 
Bitcoin in exchange for, at the time where no one knew what, where it would go, in exchange for producing a website. And he accepted it. You know, I think it was like two Bitcoin in exchange for doing a website development. And he did it. He accepted it before it was what it was today. And as it evolved to be what it is, and now it's digital gold, we didn't. So I, I think the same is to be said for NFTs. I think we don't know what it is yet, but I think that it will evolve to be the same. I don't know. What's your take? Let me just uh, maybe come back to, to the Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin is, uh, uh, first of all, everybody knows what's Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance is uh, basically the index that gives you the, let's say, the, the liquidity uh, ratio invested into Bitcoin comparing to other coins. Okay? Bitcoin is the first asset that has been promoted on the blockchain. So the, the, the founder of Bitcoin created the blockchain network in order to operate safely in a trusted way and immutable way and in a, in a very transparent way, the transaction of Bitcoins. And he created it in a very smart way that he said, okay, there is a limited supply. So it becomes immutable, like gold, like for example, the value of the gold or the, the, the demography of the gold doesn't get affected with the, with the time. So basically the fact that each transaction of the Bitcoin or each asset of Bitcoin published on the network of the blockchain is immutable makes it um, uh, very comparable to gold asset. It becomes something that is compounding, compounding power, energy, power, and, and, and this is where uh, basically you can define the value of uh, the Bitcoin itself. It's based on the cost of power, the energy and the effort that you do to, to mine, um, to, mine a, a, to mine a one Bitcoin. So it's somehow comparative and very, very uh, similar to uh, the way we are mining gold and we are exploring and we are searching for it. I mean, it makes it so rare because gold doesn't get affected with the time. The, and, and, and Bitcoin today, the more you have supply, the more it's difficult to mine more uh, assets on the network of the blockchain. Would you mind describing the for? So I, I know that some of the NFTs are bought, uh, for example, memes are bought or pieces of artwork are bought via NFTs. And... These can be duplicated and people can buy things that aren't the original, but they can buy them. Um, but the NFT is bought at millions and millions of dollars. So can you explain to me how and for our viewers as well, the difference and why it's such a an item for people to buy at such a high price when this can be duplicated? Because it's basically it's going to open the, the chance to millions of assets that are available and non-liquid assets or, 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 uh, or in the world to millions of investors who are looking to uh, basically uh, uh, diversify their investments. I, uh, I give you an example. If, if someone, uh, if you want to buy an apartment in Paris, the cost of, let's say, an average of an apartment in Paris is, is 500,000 euro, for example. Okay. So you might be able to open up this investment to 100 investors who will put everyone part of the investment through coins. If you digitalize the, um, uh, the smart contract or you tokenize the shares into this asset. This is one example, but there are so many examples. It can be cars, collection cards, can be luxury watches, uh, uh, it can be uh, um, um, art uh, um, pieces or, or, or whatever. So uh, it will become a, a huge marketplace for, um, um, let's say, assets who are listed on the blockchain tokenized through the cryptocurrency nft so every every asset but then again here we have to be very careful on um, the nature the due diligence done on those assets who who did the valuation of of those product to uh, again uh, give more credibility to the investment so at the end who is 
who is doing that due diligence. I, I, I did many uh, ICOs in, in 2017, 18, and 19. Uh, we digitalized lands and real estate projects in Dubai, in Turkey, in uh, uh, we, did, we digitalized also oil and gas uh, projects, energy projects. Um, this uh, was the start of security tokens. So it's it's very similar to what's happening now to the NFTs. Um, the process must uh, go through a, a, an independent valuation of each asset you are listing. Because somehow you need to make sure that when you say, okay, this token value is uh, $100 or $1, someone has done the independent valuation to ensure that the investment of people is not something uh, let's say uh, um, that will be diluted after some time, but it's a huge opportunity for investors because it will open for them millions and millions of uh, possibilities to invest and diversify their investment through through digital assets. So, why is it a, a huge opportunity, though? I mean, yes, you could digitize these assets. I understand that. Um, but why why is that different than what's being done today? If you uh, own a token today, okay, mm -hmm. and you want to liquidate it, so yep. basically you just go to the exchange and you sell it. Yep. If you want to sell an apartment, you have to go into a huge process mm -hmm. of, correct? So, or you want to sell any like physical asset, you cannot just go and you have to basically go to marketplaces to put it on the on those marketplaces etc you're talking about nfts tied to physical products but what about nfts that are just digital no i think all nfts are backed by assets they are they all uh, all nfts are 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 um, uh, i mean uh, uh, somehow uh, the the translation on the blockchain of uh, physical assets or or let's say, or physical, or something that has a value, not necessarily physical product, but something that has a value and, and you cannot liquidate it in terms of uh, uh, liquidity uh, e easily. Uh, like, for example, you can have, uh, you will have uh, NFTs of uh, collection watches or, or collection cars or, and then uh, you, you, you just uh, basically based on the marketing and the PR that will be done on those uh, uh, NFTs and those coins, uh, of course, will create more, more value to those uh, investments. But if you are an investor who, who, who positioned some uh, funds and allocated some funds into those coins, and uh, uh, of course, the value of the coin cannot drop because it has a, it, it's backed by an asset. It's something. It's not something like if you if you have an NFT backed by gold, it cannot drop because it's backed by the value. It it can only grow. So what if you have an NFT backed by like a digital baseball card, which are coming out from Tops, or an NFT backed by a sticker, and it's unique. I mean, each one of these base these digital baseball cards are unique because Tops will do something different with each one and up, maybe update the stats over time. How does that? Uh, do you think that's got a future? That type of NFT. I understand NFT is tied. To you know, people today like. Uh, I'm surprised really to see like people are, uh, willing to invest into crazy things like that doesn't make. I'm, I'm really like surprised because people are, want to uh, go to something new, non-traditional. Yeah. And this is why uh, uh, NFTs and and crypto and DeFi is are getting. A lot of excitement from retail investors. Uh, when you speak to them, why? Why you invest in this coin? Because I like it. There is no other explanation, you know. So it, it, it's good. Uh, and those people, I think, when they invest, we always tell them, don't invest something that you are like. I mean, if you lose it, consider that this is something that you are ready to lose and. In case in, if you invest in a high risk uh, investment like uh, some uh, coins who don't have it, someone who invested in cryptocurrency like Ethereum or Bitcoin, uh, 
uh, of course, there, there were a drop. Uh, uh, we we are seeing some drops in, um, in the past two months, uh, but I'm sure this is all manipulation uh, of some large institutional uh, uh, holders. Okay. Well, I, I always look at these things as Gen One, right? Gen One is like it's a digital representation of the physical world. But where the real thinking is going to come in is Gen 2. It's like, what can you do in the digital world that you can't do in the physical world? Uh, for example, if you're creating a, an art project or you're creating a, a new song and you want to raise money to produce it, well, why not sell NFTs to this future song and you'll have a piece of it through the NFT? I mean, that might be a Kickstarter way of doing it. Again, that's still another representation yeah, of the real world. But yeah, there, think, there's all sorts of things that – that aren't being done, that some smart people are going to figure out. So I look at Gen 1 NFTs, unless it's tied to a physical asset. And even then, what if you have a thousand people that own NFTs to a physical painting? Well, how are you going to split that painting up? What if one person one person wants it? What is Gen 1 NFTs? Well, it's just me making something up, Amanda. But oh. it's, uh, it's really like the first level thinking, the first NFTs that were issued uh, and, um, you know, I think if you look at Wax and what they did originally, which was tied NFTs to physical products, uh, that was – they were way before their time. But I think you're starting to see a lot more of that now. The second generation well, – it's not it's still the first generation to me was tied to physical goods or phys, uh, digital goods like baseball cards. And Garbage Pail Kids was really the first tradable card NFT that was put out there by Wax last year. So those things I don't think are going to last, but I mean, a lot of people are going to uh, complain to me about just stating that. I think there's going to be Gen 2 that's going to make a big difference. You, you, you know that there are so many people that invested in collection cards, right? Yeah. A huge, huge money was invested, but it was not open on an exchange. It was not right. digitalized. Uh, now we are, I like the example of uh, producing a song, song through NFT or producing films or, I mean, the possibilities are just huge, and and this has value. I mean, this is something. It's a, it's a, um, this has a, 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 the value that people are ready to give it. You know you, how you can evaluate today a piece of art. So Ali, how does this tie back into your your company, Centurion Invest? You know, you sound like a one stop shop. You are a one stop shop. How in your portfolio of clients in this sector? You know, what do you see as the biggest um, pain point for some of the clients that you onboard? What do, what do they have issues with? So, you, you know, the, the, their main, uh, um, the main challenge that investors are facing today is uh, the volatility of this market because they, they, are, um, they need to have a lot of technical um, background in analyzing markets and charts and uh, and then uh, you know uh, investment uh, is uh, is represented by charts uh, and value of assets is, and, and coins it's like a forex uh, chart as well you know it has the same behavior people buy at a certain time and sell at a certain time so those charts have some technicality and some fundamentals and investor today's today they don't have enough knowledge in reading those uh, charts so we uh, uh, we built in-house uh, experts uh, traders who basically assist investors on channels on and on the application to uh, give them direction somehow like uh, um, transparent direction of how the market is going in order to uh, assist them uh, in the way they are investing. You, you talked about DeFi. I, I'd like to kind of transition to that real quick. What is it that you see as the future of DeFi and, and what, are you, what are you guys investing in? DeFi, uh, it's it's a um, if you if you compare like uh, cryptocurrency is mainly infrastructure and, uh, and coins. Let's say it's mainly infrastructure protocols, uh, um, network, uh, data centers. DeFi is finance. It's decentralizing finance, financial instruments, and uh, and providing. Uh, 
uh, high uh, return to to investor. It's it's a financial protocol. It's a year protocol and and uh, uh, decentralizing and disrupting the financial traditional instrument that you might you may find in a bank or in a in a financial institution like loans, borrowing, uh, credit lines, uh, 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 bank guarantees. Uh, so all those, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, financial uh, tools that are used either in for individuals or for um, uh, corporates are being decentralized today by projects who launched DeFi coins and and who are rewarding investors on a high on a high yield. Okay, so you can, for example, the YFI uh, uh, project is one of the most successful DeFi uh, coins. The value is around, I think it has reached at a certain time, $60,000. Uh, it went uh, higher than Bitcoin in terms of value. Yeah, I, I think um, and DeFi is going to be huge in crypto, but we're still, again, at Gen 1 as far as I'm concerned. Are you seeing any trends? Do you know what Gen 2 looks like? I mean, everything in Gen 1 is just a copy of what's going on in the real world. It's just a lot easier and there's not all that bureaucracy and red tape. True. Yes, you've gotten rid of that. That's huge value. What does Gen 2 look like? What's 1 plus 1 equals 3 in Gen 2 of DeFi? Uh, I agree with you. Like uh, you, when you launch projects, it's you see a huge uh, progress because the, the, there is a gap. We fill it, uh, then we reach a certain limitation. So we have to um, evolve those progress in term in, in order to maintain growth. The only way I I, I see the the the, the DeFi two point zero is. Uh, the inclusion of uh, financial institutions themselves, the decentralizing the financial really? institutions. So you don't see something like, okay, I, I get a mortgage uh, to buy a house, uh, and, but part of that mortgage is financed by NFTs, people that want to invest in long-term return. And so somebody's organizing all this. And oh, by the way, um, there's a lot of extra benefits that come with this new mortgage that uh you know free title insurance because it's on the blockchain i'm making all this stuff up on the fly but maybe there's some additional benefits to being a homeowner that that applies automatically uh through smart contracts that don't you can't do that offline um and, and again give you more value just because you're either part of owning owning a house or you're a primary person living in the house that's uh in part financed by other people that want to participate in the upside it can be i mean that you know the definition of defi itself is is to decentralize a uh, um, financial relationship uh, by eliminating third parties so by eliminating banks eliminating uh, brokers uh, uh, so basically you are just on a decentralized uh, network or platform uh, where uh, you are uh, borrowing and I am lending to the platform uh, through a smart contract, for example. And it's uh, uh, something that is uh, running without the intervention of any third party who will decide what's going on. It's a smart contract signed between uh, peer peers without the intervention of anyone in order to run the uh, the relationship, I mean, uh, uh, and this is why DeFi is is, is growing. So the limitation, uh, yes, um, but I think it has to. I don't know if if uh, in F, if NFT will play a role in, uh, in this. In, in well, well it would just be an example. I mean, look what look what the financial community did with derivatives. You know, they took all these mortgages, they broke them into pieces. And then they packaged them up as B, A, C paper, and they, and they sold it to, you know, stupid investors back in 2006, 2007 who got, you know, screwed royally. 
Now, I'm not saying crypto markets going to do that. I think there's a lot more transparency there. But, the, but there are some creative and innovative things that could happen in just that space alone that I can imagine. Whether it's an NFT or not, it doesn't have to be. But it, but it could be something else that's done in DeFi 2.0 that I think will really change the game and really move people away from banks and mortgage, mortgage institutions into this crypto world. So I don't have the answer. If I did, I'd start it. <laughs> but no, I'm just curious for, if you thought me, about this. For me, really, DeFi is, is, is something, uh, um, I mean, in the financial world, it's something that will really play a, a major role because, I mean, the confusion that people make that they think that cryptocurrency is going to replace currencies, which is wrong. Okay, it's, it's something really wrong. I mean, I don't think cryptocurrency is going to replace currencies. It will be something that will be included in the ecosystem of payment of a lot of marketplaces or whatever systems or maybe banks or whatever, you know, but, but I don't think, I think governments are going to adopt uh, their own uh, digital currencies very soon and they started doing it. But DeFi is um, is something really disrupting financial institutions and this is why I, I think that the, the second wave of DeFi should include financial institutions because somehow it is only based on uh, on smart contract uh, execution. What, what happened between two people, who, someone who is lending or someone who is like opening a, a bank guarantee or letter of credit, it's all on the, on the blockchain, either on the Ethereum protocol or any other uh, protocol, let's say. And, and it's executed very well. And the, the way DeFi is getting rewarded, it's, uh, a, it's a revenue share from the transactions that are happening on, on the network of DeFi, on those applications or on those protocols. So I think that they are going to disrupt a lot of things, mortgages, house mortgages, insurance. I agree. Uh, you're going to take some flack for uh, suggesting that DeFi 2 should include centralized financial institutions, just, let, just to let you know. But it's interesting um, because in some respects, I, I could see why they would have to be involved. Uh, the purest, you know, like the, the Bitcoin maximalists, there's going to be DeFi maximalists. Uh, and, and definitely all things decentralized are, are going to say that's blasphemy that you know, we can figure out how to do it in a decentralized fashion without having these bureaucrats and these people that have been manipulating the financial systems for the last 50 years. But uh, I don't know what you think about that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a very long uh, uh, topic to, to I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, but uh, at the end, uh, uh, so I think at a certain time you will have a complete adoption of uh, uh, of all this because the, the the power has to return to people, right? To well, I agree. Mm -hmm. Amanda, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, absolutely. That's the what power has to part. return yes. to people. Like, I mean, yes. Uh, uh, democracy on blockchain, financial institutions, decentralized financial institutions on blockchain. I mean, if you can see that at the end, uh, blockchain is just empowering, or all those applications are just empowering people. Okay, to to have more um, freedom in the way they either manipulate their assets, their investments. Uh, okay, there is risk. You will hear a lot of stories about uh, money laundering and illegal uh, use and etc. But okay, comparing to the legacy world, I think we have hundred or thousand more stories that uh, has, has been like uh, not disclosed till now uh, in the public. Well, I like I like your uh, the subject of inclusion with these institutions currently. But I, in the media, at least it's portrayed that, you know, the institutions are not a lot, not all of them, but some of them are not very happy about this new type of currency being adopted because you would, in fact, you know, they would not have a job. They would be kind of outed. But you're talking about this inclusion. So my question to you is how has that, I don't want to call it battle, but how has that 
approach been received as far as cryptocurrency being inclusive with these institutions? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, 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 we, we are disrupting a huge ecosystem. So uh, we will not be able to, if we want to achieve our target, we have to, in, we have to be inclusive for all the existing uh, system. I mean, your banks have ag- agencies, they have branches, they have back offices, they have a lot of things. I mean, if, if they adopt blockchain uh, ecosystem, either DeFi or crypto or any other kind of application, it will be a great a huge uh, success for uh, for the community and for for people as well for the for users because it will provide more transparency in the way transactions are are happening so yeah. just if you if you look at the big picture uh, somehow you would say wow we we did wrong choices in our life so we have to disrupt all this and make sure that we we move to another stage this is why we are all investing and promoting blockchain. And I think you, Mark, or you, Amanda, are uh, one of the enthusiasts supporting blockchain community and cryptocurrency for, for this for the same reason. It's the same with the governments. I, I'm, I'm not going to put it into politics, but you cannot give the power to 100 person who control your life and your uh, future. And you don't have any governance on this. Uh, it's a blockchain has to decentralize uh, the power uh, of everything. Yeah, I, I think you're going to have a lot of support with that. Um, governments have proven uh, over time to just get corrupt, more and more corrupt, even in the U.S., even with the system of government we have. There's so much rampant corruption. It, it's really unbelievable. I mean, it's still probably the best form of government out there, but uh, I mean, when you get into a situation like the blockchain where the, everything's pre-programmed, there's very little manipulation that can take place unless large groups of people decide, hey, let's do this. That's probably the fairest system that, that I've seen. So more power to that. The faster we can get there, the better as far as I'm concerned. I think it's got to be done smartly. But uh, let's let's go you know, carefully, but let's get there eventually, at least let's in my lifetime. There. Let's get there. So we, have to, we have to succeed the, the first step. I'm trying to buy a house. We need to get there like tomorrow, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just buying a house. I mean, that's, that's one all. example. Yeah. <laughs> it's so painful. It is really painful to do so. I don't even know how people even try uh, going going through what they're going through. So so with that, how do people get a hold of you, um, Ali, and and where where can they find you online? You, you can access centurioninvest.com. And then uh, from there, you just register. You will be immediately contacted by the customer service and the customer experience department. We basically guide you through your journey of investment in, in the platform. And my profile is public. You know, you can find me on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Just type Ali Kassab and then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big supportive of uh, startups, entrepreneurs, uh, innovation. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, value creation, empowerment of people. So wonderful. Thank you. You are welcome.